This is probably the best thing that's ever happened to us. That was pretty good. Well, things aren't so bad. Fine. No, good. Fine. Good. I fucked up. I fucked up so bad. This is the worst thing that has ever happened in the history of human events. Oh, Scream 6, you have officially murdered my interest in ever seeing another installment in this franchise. Where even to start? For a movie that rattles on and on about the rules of horror movies and reboots and franchises, these characters still choose to do some stupid fracking things. The smartest person associated all with Scream 6 was Nev Campbell, who had the foresight to turn down this train wreck without a substantial payday to do it. If the characters in this movie aren't straight up making bad horror movie decisions, they are doing one of two things, either going down existential rabbit holes about how messed up their past is, or going round and round in a circle accusing the others of being a murderer. You're the killer. No, you're the killer. No, you're the killer. And this core four who are supposed to be carrying this franchise forward at this point, my opinions on them vary from merely disinterested to outright disdain. They are just straight up mean and bullies to anyone who isn't in their little circle, and their arcs in this movie are just painfully obvious with zero subtlety to them at all. I'm not a fan of torch-bearing characters in general at all. It's one of the reasons I did not care for Scream 5 and the issues carry from that movie over into this one. Characters like the movie nerd or the new dark and broody one were done so much better by the originals that when these new ones attempt it, it just feels so much less than. Even Gail in this one seems like a shadow of her former self, and when her big scene finally comes around, the movie attempts to reclaim some of that past glory, but it just feels hollow and doesn't work. With all that said, for most of the movie, I I was actually rolling along with it just fine. It certainly wasn't my favorite by any stretch, but it also wasn't offensively bad. Until it got to the ending, and everything just goes completely off the rails. I was able to guess the killer, or killers, which was shockingly easy to do, because apparently the writers of Scream 6 have very little idea about actual human behavior. Once the killer, or killers, reveal themselves, they go straight into generic crazy person mode, making faces and getting all twitchy. I'm guessing that no one bothered to watch Laurie Metcalf's masterpiece performance from the final scenes in Scream 2, where it's obvious she's off her rocker, but without going all <laughs> keeping it grounded with focus on her very personal motivation. I'm very sane. My motive isn't as 90s as Mickey's. Mine is just good old-fashioned revenge. You killed my son! Two things stand out above everything else for me in Scream 6. I don't do spoilers, but towards the end of the movie, one of the most ridiculous things happens that I've ever seen in any movie ever. I audibly groaned out loud when it happened, loud enough for someone a few seats down from me in the theater to look over and laugh. If you watch Scream 6, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about and just how shocking and its buffoonery it is to go in that particular direction. And the other isn't a spoiler, but I am going to discuss a particular line of dialogue here, one where they're talking about Stu from the original, and Mindy, the new less likable version of Randy, questions whether he is really dead or not. Now there is being meta, which the screen movies have always dabbled in, and then there is straight up confusing what world your movie is actually set in. The debate around Stu actually being dead is a movie topic in our real world. In the universe that Scream is set in, there is no way in hell his fate is not a well-known public fact especially to the people apparently so well versed in the overall lore because they're living through it. He is either dead or much less likely in prison which somehow has just not been mentioned at this point in the franchise. I'm really worried that this small bit of dialogue is setting the stage for his return in Scream 7, a film which is going to happen unfortunately. Normally I tell people don't take my word for it, go and see it yourself and make up your own mind. This is the rare, rare film where if someone asks me I will say don't see it. If for no other reason and then on the outside hope it performed so poorly financially that the studio was forced to throw money at Kevin Williamson to get him to come back and write the script, which is just about the only way I can see any sort of resurrection for the franchise. I fear these new films are just tainting the overall legacy of the original, which was groundbreaking and innovative. I usually try to insert humor into the things I do on this channel, but there is nothing funny about Scream 6. I just left the theater feeling... Ah! I'm insane with anger!